Coming up on this week's show, Garrett Groves is here as part of the 2017 GRL Blog Tour, and he's going to talk about his latest book, Clickbait. Welcome to the Big Gay Fiction Podcast, the show for readers and writers of gay romance fiction. If you can read it, write it, watch it, or listen to it, these two guys are going to talk about it. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Adams and Will Knauss. Welcome to episode number 95 of Jeff and Will's Big Gay Fiction Podcast. I'm Jeff from jeffadamswrites.com. And I'm Will from willknauss.com. This week's episode is brought to you in part by listeners just like you. We'll have more information on how you can help support this show in just a few minutes. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Welcome back. Woohoo! We survived the week. Oh my god. Busy week. It was a very busy week on all fronts. So tell us a busy one. Fill us in. I thought you might fill us in on this first grand big thing that we've got. <laughs> um, earlier this week, Jeff and I uh, signed a contract for our co-written book. Um, I honestly don't remember how much we've talked about this in the past. I think we've referred to it in oblique terms. Uh, we can tell you, currently the title is The Hockey Player's Heart. Um, we've signed the contract, and it will be a dream spun desire sometime in early 2018. Yes. Looks like, looks like January, February, according to the contract. So, so. very exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, uh, I will say that Will's a little more into the obliqueness than I am. I tend to put out there what I'm working on and what it is, and he, he wanted to keep this tamp down just a skosh more. If it, if it, <laughs> if you haven't signed on the dotted line, it's not real. <laughs> and we don't talk about it. That's the rule. <laughs> but congratulations. I'm very excited that we have, we have a co-written book. We do indeed. Yes. It's a little daunting that the editing starts immediate, as the email <laughs> said. Yeah, um, I'm very happy, of course, but the uh, turnaround on this particular book is most likely going to be very, very fast. Mm -hmm. Uh, And since this is my first time going through the editorial process, uh, I'm a little worried, uh, daunted, maybe. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. I've been coaching him a little bit on what to expect. I actually taught him how to use track ten, track changes yesterday in Word, which will be all new, and I've given him one of my old Dream Spinner manuscripts to, to play with over the next week while we wait at, at, on edits, so you'll be fine. Yeah. So that's our big news. You also have more edits to deal with. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, unexpectedly, uh, out of the blue, at the, in the inbox yesterday came edits for my short story called Head in the Game, which is going into the Changing on the Fly 2 anthology that'll be out in October. The edits are not that bad. It's it's commas. I need remedial comma college folks. I really do because I just don't. I seem to not ever use them correctly. <laughs> if I put them in, they get moved somewhere else, and I, more often than not, I'm leaving them out, so they're getting put in. Mm. It's crazy town. But yeah, working on that. So that's kind of fun, and I should have that wrapped up in the next day or so. So good. Not a bad thing at all. I'm also working on writing Codename Winger Three right now. Uh, and I've talked a little bit about my dabbling in the dictation realm. Mm -hmm. So I'm convinced that I want Dragon. Uh, The the idea of dictating a story... What is Dragon? Oh, I thought I covered that the last time, but I could do that. Dragon is a software that is the preferred dictation transcription software, I guess would be the two things that it does. Uh, used by many authors. If you hear authors talk about doing dictation, it, it's by and large that they're doing it with the Dragon software because Dragon can learn how you speak and if you're writing sci-fi, you can tell it when you say some weird alien name to actually spell it correctly for you and such. And I started off doing what I was doing with the transcription, the speech-to-text that's built into my Mac. Mm-hmm. Which is okay. It does a fairly decent job, but it's going to cost me more time to go back and fix what it's doing than, I think, to get Dragon and to start there. And in the meantime, to just write the book as I normally would until I procure the software and train the Dragon correctly. 
but I'm getting there, and I'll keep everybody kind of posted on on, on the dictation thing because it's supposedly everybody that does it ends up making more words words happen faster for them, and I can see where that's possible. So we shall see. So big things happened at RWA this week. I mean, basically RWA was happening all week anyway, uh, and that's Romance Writers of America for those who are not familiar. Uh, but there was huge news uh, for the gay romance community as Andrew Gray was the recipient of the RWA Centennial Award. How cool is that? It's very cool. Uh, so he is now one of 26 RWA authors who've ever gotten the Centennial Award for publishing 100 books. And just let that sink in for a little bit. That's 100 books. Technically, Andrew has published more than one. That is very let's, true. Let's just be clear. Yes. Andrew has published more than 100. That is true, because uh, he crossed this line sometime <laughs> earlier this year, and he just yeah. got the award at RWA this week. But if you think about the fact that I believe his publishing career is all with Dream Spinner Press, mm-hmm. and he does write under uh, Jeff Lawton, and he's got another pen name that I'm blanking on right now, but that's 10 years, because Dream Spinner just celebrated 10 years in May this year. And he's done more than 100 books. Um, it's outstanding, and I aspire to 100 books, probably in, like, what, 2050, maybe? <laughs> it's the pace that I write. And this this award puts him in the company of writers like Nora Roberts, uh, Debbie Maycomer, Vicki Lewis Thompson. Uh, it's, it's really outstanding. And he is the first man to get this award. And the first in the gay romance genre to get this award. So, congratulations, Andrew! Amazing. Mm-hmm. And we will get to thank him uh, publicly for his service to the genre when he appears on our show, which will be on our centennial coming up September fourth. Yeah. Can you believe we're talking about the hundredth episode? Looking forward to it. In just five weeks. Ah. Mm. <laughs> so. Everybody knows I love Serena Bowen. One yes. Of my, <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> one of my very, very, very favorite authors. And she actually publishes, not just in the States and in English-speaking countries, but she does have titles around the world in some cases, including some of her self-published stuff. And recently, she unveiled the covers for Him and Us from her Taiwan publisher, Yes, she's publishing in Taiwan, and she's been offering up to folks who subscribe, who not subscribe, who are buying things through her web store, the opportunity to get a a 5 by 7 print of what the cover looks like, and if you're on the video feed, you're actually seeing it right now. This is a drawn cover. I think it is just gorgeous with the two hockey players um, on the hockey rink. I I was just, like, stunned the first time I saw it. I actually printed off a picture that was on Facebook just so I could tack it up on my wall. And then as soon as she started offering these, of course, I had to go right to the web store and pick up something so that I could get this spiffy little card. The way this works is that there are two players on the 5x7, and the covers are actually split in two so that one player appears on him and one player appears on us. And when you bring your covers together, you get the whole picture. I can assure you, if these are in any way possible for me to acquire once they come out, I will have Taiwanese copies of these books to put on my shelf. Because every now and then you have to buy the book because you love it enough and the cover's awesome. Because we've done that before. We have several copies of a few books because the covers are very, very cool. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Earlier this week, this is really apropos of nothing, but I wanted to mention it. (laughs) In case some of our listeners might be interested. Earlier this week, I sampled the Netflix series Castlevania. Um, This is an anime based on the classic video game. Um, I don't know how uh, faithful it is to the storyline of the game, but I very much enjoyed this particular show. Um, It's four half-hour episodes, which is... It's essentially... uh, movie pilot you know uh divided up into to uh an episodic format and um if you were into say vampire hunter d like way back in the day i really enjoyed that um i think you might like castlevania um it's about 
uh, it's sort of an alternative take on the Dracula myth. Uh, Dracula is, uh, for very good reason, rampaging and uh, killing an entire community. Uh, and the bulk of the four episodes is about the reluctant hero, hero who uh, takes up the call and uh, tries to vanquish uh, the world's most despicable villain. Um, it's beautifully animated. Uh, I really enjoyed the animation and the style of the whole show. Uh, the voice work is really excellent. And um, like I said, it's a uh, slightly different take, uh, an incredibly violent one, <laughs> <laughs> um, on the Dracula uh, myth. So uh, if if Paranormal is your bag, you might want to check out uh, Castlevania. It is on Netflix right now. Cool. So after I take a sip of water, I'm going to thank all of our patrons. Uh, we appreciate you very much. As we cruise ever closer to our 100th episode, we certainly could not do it without you. Now, you can help support the Big Gay Fiction Podcast with a monthly pledge through Patreon. For as little as 25 cents an episode, your pledge helps pay for the costs of producing and distributing this podcast. And for fans who pledge at the silver and gold levels, you'll have the exclusive opportunity to ask questions of our upcoming guests. Yeah. You now, could actually get a question in to Andrew. Cer certainly could. Yes, indeed. Now, all patrons have the option... Uh, to also have a personalized thank you from the two of us sent to them directly to your home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nothing to add to that? No. No. no? I just thought I'd go mm -hmm, to that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can get more details on becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash big gay fiction podcast. That's P A T R E O N slash big gay fiction podcast. Did you know that podcasts love to get reviews too? Taking a moment to leave a review about the Big Gay Fiction Podcast helps us with the show's visibility online. Please take a moment to visit iTunes and leave a review. Your comments help other readers of gay romance discover this show. Thanks for helping us spread the word about the Big Gay Fiction Podcast. So you've been reading a lot, which is awesome, because you actually have books to review. I've been, I swear I'm reading... It's like all of a sudden I hit a slump, but I really didn't. I'm actually uh, beta reading for a fellow author right now. So that's a book that even when I finish it, I won't really be able to talk about here on the show until it comes out later down the road. But I am back in J-Bell's audio world, so I'll have something to talk about that a little later. Cool. Okay. What, um, what have you got? Well, I have two books to talk about this week. The first one I want to talk about is Tall, Dark, and Deported by Brew Baker. Um, this is the first book that I have read by Brew. Brew's been writing for quite a while. Uh, and I finally gotten off my ass, and I finally read one of her books. Awesome. And I could not have loved it more. Seriously. Oh, my God. I love, <laughs> I, I, I love this book very, very much because, uh, among other things, uh, besides it being an incredibly well-written book, uh, it's also a marriage of convenience book. We all know that's his thing. <laughs> so, okay. As you can tell from the title, uh, this particular book is uh, a marriage, not relationship of convenience, story. Uh, and it involves some immigration shenanigans. So, to start, um, our first hero is Mateus, and he is from Portugal. And he's currently living in Washington with his brother, helping out run the uh, family apple orchard. Cool. Now, he's here on a visa, and his visa is about to run out. So, the plan is to hop across the border to Canada, and then come right back. And it'll reset his visa for a couple of months. And by that time, the orchard should be up and running, and uh, his brother can offer him a salary for work at the orchard, and he can uh, apply for a work visa. Mm. Okay. Uh, our other hero, his name is Crawford. Crawford works as an auditor for a fancy hotel chain. And he's heading up to Vancouver to check on uh, a property that isn't doing very well. And Mateus and Crawford meet at the airport. Uh, and they immediately catch one another's eye. Um, and they get to talking and hanging out because of... Uh, delays mm -hmm. at the airport. 
uh, eventually it, it turns out their flights are canceled. Uh, and so in order for them to get to Vancouver, um, Crawford um, offers to rent a car and drive them there. Okay. Uh, so once they get to the border, uh, they experience some problems. Uh, Mateus is pulled aside. Uh, uh, his visa looks suspicious, and they decide not to let him into Canada. Oh. And here's the problem. Um, because of his nearly expired visa, he can't get into Canada, and they're not going to let him back into the U.S., so he's stuck. Um, and if he doesn't get any help, he's going to be deported back to Portugal. So... At the spur of the moment, <laughs> Crawford comes up with a brilliant idea. <laughs> but wait, we're headed to Vancouver to get married. You can't, de you know, detain him here at the border. <laughs> and the the customs person at the border uh, is a romantic, and he goes, "Oh, okay, I didn't realize." Crawford is actually a really good storyteller, and he spins a really, really convincing tale. <laughs> it's like so, the guy at the border totally buys it. Uh, and they make their way into Vancouver, uh, where they get married uh, and end up spending what is their honeymoon at the property that Crawford is looking at. Now, unfortunately, not only is there a, a spur-of-the-moment marriage that they're trying to deal with, Crawford has to work with his ex-husband, mm. who is also at this hotel uh, trying to get it back on its feet. So there's lots of drama, lots of expectations. Um, all the while, uh, they realize um, that they're really into one another. Um, part of the marriage of convenience trope is that it takes a while for the characters to really understand and come to grips with the feelings that they're beginning to have because their entire relationship is based on the uh, uh, lie. Mm -hmm. They naturally assume um, characters whenever they're in this situation that uh, anything that's um, anything the other person says or what they may be feeling uh, isn't really the truth. Mm. So they have to work through that. They've also got um, a lot of other uh, things going on in the story, uh, kind of pulling them apart, even though they're both really terrific guys. And if you just look at them, they're like completely made for one another. It's totally obvious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, they eventually uh, head back to the U.S., um, and they encounter more problems. There's going to be a, a site visit. They have to prove that they're, like, married for real. Oh, goodness. Uh, so, um, instead of heading back to L.A., Crawford ends up going back to Washington to the Apple Farm and hangs out with Mateus and his family. Uh, and they realize that they love each other even more. Of course. While they're there. Um, uh, so... Yeah, I, I I don't want to keep going because um, there's some incredibly tense stuff that happens at the very end of the book. It's like, oh my god, Brew, you were killing me. You were killing me. Because the story went in some very um, unexpected directions for me. Um, what I thought was obviously going to happen next didn't. Um, I love it when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was like reading along, and I was like, "Oh, we're going there. That's really interesting." Um, so, not only was this book, you know, uh, totally my trope, uh, which I love to pieces. Um, the book was um, charming and entertaining, really, really interesting with engaging characters uh, and uh, well written, um, with some unexpected twists that I wasn't expecting. The very, very end. Um, so kudos cool. to you, Brew Baker. I really, really enjoyed Tall, Dark, and Departed. I highly recommend it uh, if anyone is into Marriage of Convenience. Nice. Yeah. Now I need to read that book. It's really, really good. I highly. I don't like Marriage of Convenience quite as much as you do, <laughs> but this one sounds really, really good. And unlike some of the other Marriage of Convenience books that have been in the Dreamspun line mm -hmm. thus far. Mm-hmm.
I like this one Very a cool. lot. So let me be your Vanna now for the video feed. Also this week, I read the short novella by today's guest, um, Open Road by Garrett Groves. Now, this is a short May-December romance, and it is about Jake, uh, the younger of our couple. Uh, he, um, he's young, he wants to spread his wings, and things at home in his small town aren't exactly great, so he packs, packs up his, his meager belongings into his junker of a car and heads cross-country to L.A., that's where he's going to start life over, and everything's going to be amazing. Unfortunately, his junky old car breaks down just outside of uh, Kingsman, Arizona. Uh, luckily for him, uh, the incredibly handsome mechanic stops by, uh, Mitch. He is the older man of our couple. And uh, Mitch takes pity of him, you know, the, the poor kid stranded on the side of the road. And he tows this junker old car back to his garage. And uh, instead of having him just sleep in the back seat of his car, uh, he offers Jake, you know, his couch for the night. So he takes him back home. Jake gets to uh, not freeze to death in his little car. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bonus. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the next day, Mitch takes a look at uh, Jake's car, and it's not as bad as it seems. Uh, he fixes it, and they end up spending the rest of the day together. Um, because there is a attraction. Um, once they, they get to talking, they realize they have more in common than might be, you know, at first obvious. Mm. Um, both of them had, you know, uh, kind of a difficult time growing up. Um, they maybe feel a little bit like outsiders, uh, in their environment. Uh, and they both dream of, uh, escaping to somewhere better so they get to know one each other during this like 24-hour period uh they end up hooking up uh but the very next morning uh jake has to uh continue his drip he's he's still gonna you know head out to california and um mitch has to come to a decision is this very is this brand new possible relationship worth, you know, putting himself out there? He really, poor, poor Mitch, I feel for him. Um, he really felt like he was like over the hill and life had passed him by and his life in Kingsman was all he was ever going to have. So when this, you know, young kid unexpectedly shows up and shows him that there's actually, you know, a lot more possibilities that he may not have actually considered. Um, it really makes for uh, uh, heartwarming. Um, well, that's a bit of a schmoopy word, but... Um, uh, <laughs> a schmoopy. A really, a, schmoopy word. a really satisfying climax <laughs> to this short story. Now, uh, short novella. So, uh, if you are interested in Open Road, all you have to do is go to Garrett... Groves' website. That's Garrett with one R, two T's, Groves.com. And uh, just sign up right there and he will send you Open Road uh, 100% totally free. Yeah. So I really enjoyed this story. Um, I highly recommend checking it out. If you're into May, December and are maybe a little bit curious of what uh, Garrett Groves' style is, uh, it's a very good style. I like this story a whole lot. Cool. I'll have to read this, too. Yeah. Um, I didn't get a chance to read it before I talked to him this week. Uh, and we asked him, among other things, we talk about why May-December is his jam mm -hmm. to write, because it, it does follow through uh, several of his stories. Yeah. So, shall we get to that interview? We shall. Today, I'm welcoming Garrett Groves to the podcast as part of the 2017 GRL blog tour. Garrett is an MM romance author based in Southwest Florida. There, he enjoys spending time with his husband and their two cats. Their hobbies include being disgustingly codependent, sleeping, eating junk food, and drinking copious amounts of red wine. Welcome, Garrett. Hey there. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be on today. Yeah, happy to have you here. I suppose if we'd scheduled our interview later in the night, you could have brought red wine to the table. but <laughs> Yeah, maybe the cats, too. <laughs> <laughs> this early in the morning might be a, a, a little too much for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a day drinker yet. I'm getting there. I haven't worked up my way up. <laughs> 
So you've got a new book coming out. It drops uh, on July 31st, which is the day this podcast comes out. Tell us a little bit about Clickbait. Yeah, so Clickbait is the first book in my new series, Off the Record. Um, if you've ever seen the HBO show The Newsroom, it's very heavily based on that show. <laughs> Uh, I studied journalism in, in college, so journalism is kind of my passion, and I've always had this idea since I decided I wanted to write romance that I wanted to do something political or kind of journalism focused. Um, so the idea sprang from that. Um, it's going to be a three book series. Uh, I don't want to give too many details on the other books yet just because I don't have them all ironed out. Um, but yeah, the first book is coming out July 31st. Um, it's a it's a passion project of mine. I've been wanting to write this since I decided to start writing romance back in January or so. So it's it's definitely something I've had on my wish list. Um, I don't know how detailed you want to get on the, the actual detail of the book here, um, but it is a May-December story. I'm kind of known for that. That's what I do. Um, it's with a, a YouTube star um, who's not really YouTube because I couldn't do that without getting in trouble. <laughs> Um, and an older kind of establishment media type guy who is a cable news anchor, um, they hate each other. It is an enemies to lovers story. So things start off pretty antagonistic between the two of them. And then eventually they're assigned to work on a project together and things kind of devolve from there. So, um, there's media intrigue involved and leaked photos. It's a lot of fun. It's the longest book I've ever read or written, but it's like my favorite by far. So if you're into a 100,000-word <laughs> romance novel with May, December themes and enemies to lovers, this is your jam. And journalism. I'm, yes, I, exactly. I, I'm also a journalist by by education, so, and I like a good May, December. So, yeah, I, I think I'll have to pick, be picking that up. Now, you mentioned May, December was kind of your thing. How did you decide to want to go down that path? Well, so I actually am in a May-December relationship myself. Um, my husband's 20 years older than me, so it's kind of personal for me. And I knew when I started writing romance that I wanted to do something that I actually had an interest in um, because I couldn't put my heart into writing something that I didn't really know and that I would have to do a ton of research on. Like, even I'm trained as a journalist, but I hate doing research. <laughs> I really hate it. Um, so I was like, you know what, I'd rather do something that I, I know and can kind of speak to from my own personal experience because I think it'll make a better story. Um, and I only intended to do one book off at the start that way and people loved it and responded really well to it. So I said, well, I mean, if they like it, I'll just give them more of it because it's not really hard for me to write. Like all of our friends are, are May December couples. So there's plenty of inspiration for me to draw from and like, sorry guys, you're in my books. <laughs> <laughs> do they know you're in, that they're in your book? Uh, some of them do, some of them don't. I mean, it's never anything overt, like, but I do draw certain personality elements and some kind of like conflicts that I've seen in relationships with my friends, like things that they fought about in the past, but you know, fabricate it. So it's not totally obvious. <laughs> Any resemblance to those living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Maybe I should put a disclaimer at the start of the book. <laughs> you mentioned you'd been, uh, publishing just since January or writing just since January. Uh, what made you take the leap? Yeah, so I was writing um, under a different name. I was doing some erotica stuff just to kind of explore and learn the market and how self-publishing itself actually works. I started that in, I think, like May of last year. And in October of last year was really when I decided to take the plunge because I was like, oh, I kind of enjoy this, but I'm not really down with writing these three 5,000-word stories every week and then have them not make anything. Um, if I'm going to be a writer, I want to actually be paid for my work. So I, believe it or not, had not even read a romance novel before I decided to write them. <laughs> uh, so I went on a binge in October. I mean, I, I got a Kindle Unlimited subscription, and I just read everything that I could possibly read to try and get a feel for the genre and what people like, what they don't like, and what I could write, what I would enjoy writing. Um, and I found a book which actually really pushed me over the edge. It was the book uh, The Weight of It All by N.R. Walker. Um, I'm sure that'll be familiar to a lot of the listeners. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite books I've ever read. It is so funny and it's so encouraging and it's not a traditional book, but it really helped me mold my style and the kind of humorous, uh, not too serious tones and plots that I take in my books. So it was at that point after I finished reading that I was like, okay, I can do this. There's a market for this. This is what I really want to do. So I started writing. I think I wrote maybe two drafts that I wasn't really happy with of a different story idea and threw them out. 
And then in February, uh, by that time I had rolled around, I started working on my first book, which was Salt and Pepper. Um, and I put it out there in March, and it did phenomenally well. And ever since then, I've just been on a <laughs> roller coaster ride of a journey. I was still working full time when I wrote that first book. Uh, I went full time writing in May. I quit my job in technical support, and uh, I've been doing this full time since then and loving it. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Congratulations. That's awesome. Thank you. Why the the plunge into self-publishing rather than uh, connecting with one of the publishers in the genre? I'm a bit of a control freak. Um, I wanted to be able to do everything myself, mostly because I want to learn about it all myself. Um, I've had a natural thirst for knowledge, especially about like marketing and PR and things like that. Um, actually, one of my big regrets is that I didn't study that in school and did reporting instead because my reporting degree has been pretty worthless. But... Uh, so yeah, I just wanted control. I wanted to be able to say like, no, I want it to look this way. I want it to sound this way. I wanted to be able to market it the way that I wanted to market it um, and kind of learn from the mistakes along the way. And hey, what have you discovered in these first seven months of, of being self <laughs> It really is a full-time job. I mean, it never stops. Like I've had conversations just recently with my husband like, hey, you know, I knew when you were going into this that it was going to be a lot of time spent, but I wasn't imagining 14, 16-hour days just going at it. But for me, it's not really even work. It doesn't feel like work. This is something that I love. It's something I've wanted to do since I was old enough to write. So for me, it's like I just get lost in it, and I totally lose track of time. Um, and general basic hygiene and well-being habits <laughs> sometimes uh, – so that's one thing I've had to learn, and I'm still working on that to try and devise a sort of work-life balance because, like, it's always there. I mean, all I have to do is walk into the office and say, I'm going to just, oh, quick five minutes, let me work on this cover or something. And then, it, you know, 10 hours later, I'm still knee-deep in it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing I've had to learn. Another thing I've had to learn, too, is budgeting, uh, finances. Um, I mean, when I first started out, I was just kind of like, oh, well, this is experimental stuff, so I can just throw whatever I want at it. I don't really have to pay too much attention because I still have a day job that's paying the bills, like whatever. But now that it's full time and due to the payment delay that I get from Amazon, because you're not paid until 60 days after a sale occurs, um, you really have to watch what you're spending and where you're spending it because your money's not coming for another two months. Um, so I've become a bit of a spreadsheet queen in the last <laughs> month or so to keep track of all this stuff. Uh, I mean, my Google Drive is like... A, disaster area of spreadsheets and random documents like receipt pictures it's it's insane but i'm trying to keep it all straight i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> what's next on your publishing agenda i assume there'll be more off the record since clickbait gets that started yeah there's definitely two more books that i've got planned there there's room to grow it if i want to um but three i feel like is a good number uh just to start with other than that, I don't really have anything fleshed out for the rest of the year. I think that's kind of what I'm going to be working on for the rest of the year. Although I'm exploring, uh, based on some input from my fans, uh, writing on a different pen name, some vampire MM romance. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm in the middle of plotting that right now. I'm kind of like really geeking out over it because I love vampires. But we'll see what happens with that. Maybe that'll, that'll fit in later in, in the year, maybe October-ish. But I can't make any promises on that yet. <laughs> okay. So what are you looking forward to at your maiden voyage at GRL? Oh, man. Um, so many things. It, I, On one hand, I'm a little overwhelmed uh, because I went to the RT convention in Atlanta in May, um, and that was insane. There were so many people there. <laughs> but it was nice because nobody really knew who I was other than my author friends, so I, didn't, I wasn't getting constantly approached and kind of like bombarded with, you know, take pictures on my book, which, don't get me wrong, that, does, that doesn't bother me. Um, but that's one thing I'm looking forward to at GRL is kind of making the connection with the fans and, and getting to know some people who I've talked with online on Facebook and things like that, but haven't actually gotten to meet yet. Um, just being there as an author. I mean, I was there at RT more as like a, an attendee because I went to so many panels and all kinds of different things like that. I mean, GRL feels more of like a, almost like a family event. I'm getting, I'm looking forward to meeting my so-called family online. Yeah. Um, comparison between the two are, you could fit GRL almost into one of the larger RT events. 
sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of the sense I got from it. That, but I like that though, the more intimate feel and, and yeah. actually getting time to t- talk to people and not mm-hmm. just feeling like rushed like a rat through a race. Yeah, GRL is very enjoyable for that because you're right. It is. It seems more like a family reunion of just three hundred yeah, of your closest family. Too, like, People all seem to kind of know each other. Like, even if we don't really know each other, we at least know of each other. So it's not awkward. It's not like you're cold calling or some weird stuff like that. It's like, oh, hey, I know you. We should talk. And everybody's so cool. That's the one thing I love about this community. And I learned that in Atlanta, too. I mean, all the authors and all the professionals I talk to, everyone is so nice and so approachable and so open to new people and, and just talking. It's it's great. I love this community so much. I wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for the community, really. <laughs> Now, I know you've got a giveaway for our listeners. Uh, tell us what, that, what, what, what you're giving away. Yeah, so I am giving away uh, one of three signed paperback copies of my new, bit, new book, Clickbait. Um, it's via Rafflecopter. You can do it on my site, and we're going to have the embed code for the, the page for the episode as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you can enter a couple different ways. Um, the best way is by joining my mailing list. That's weighted a little heavier. Um, you can also visit my Facebook page for an entry or visit my Twitter page for an entry. And if I'm not mistaken, if people join up to your email list, they also get a free book, right? That's correct. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that. So I have a freebie novella. Uh, it's called Open Road. So if you join up to my mailing list, you'll also get that as part of joining. Uh, it's about 20,000 words. It's uh, another May, December story um, about two people kind of starting over in their lives together. I've had some interest in expanding that into a series, which I may do later this year, depending on if I have time. Uh, So if you're interested in that, yeah, go ahead and sign up for that. You'll get your entry and your free book. Can't beat that. Awesome. And what's the best way for everyone to keep up with you? I am most active on Facebook. Um, I don't really use a whole lot of the other social media platforms just because my audience tends to be more on Facebook. Um, But I am on the other places. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm exploring Instagram right now. I like photos a lot and I travel a lot. So I think that's kind of cool to use. But my home base is my website, uh, garrettgroves.com. I've got everything on there, all the links to where you can find me, all my books, etc. So if you can't remember anything else, just remember my name.com. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. We'll put all that in the show notes, too, so people can have quick links over to all of that. And as you said, we'll have the Rafflecopter on the show notes page as well, so people can enter. Outstanding. Well, Garrett, it's been so great talking to you. Look forward to meeting you in Denver. Yeah, I can't wait. The Big Gay Fiction Podcast is thrilled to once again partner with Gay Romlet as a featured blogger. You can see all the participating blogs and the full GRL blog tour schedule at gayromlet.com slash 2017 blog tour. Gay Romlet is an annual retreat that brings together the people who create and celebrate LGBT romance for a -a one-of-a-kind must-attend gathering of dynamic, informal, and diverse fun. Each year, the retreat travels to a new city and hosts tons of events from raucous parties to mellow tete-a-tetes while still maintaining a spirit of familiarity. GRL is the place to connect with old friends, find family you didn't know you had, and meet with both newly published and established authors in the gay romance genre. This year's retreat is set for October 19 through 22 in Denver, Colorado at the Denver Marriott Tech Center. For more information or to register, please visit gayromlet.com. Hockey players Simon Roberts and Alex Miller never could have known that the moment they first kissed, they were embarking on the love of a lifetime. The Hat Trick box set is their love story as told by Simon beginning their senior year of high school through college graduation and beyond from the insecurity of coming out to mentorship of gay youth. For Simon and Alex, it's always about love, family, and hockey. The box set includes three full-length novels and three short stories in one easy-to-download ebook. Get yours today at Amazon.com and other online retailers. So I really enjoyed talking to Garrett. Mm-hmm. Um, I look forward to meeting him at GRL a whole bunch. Yeah, to, so like, do I. To pick his brain some more. I know you've been following kind of what he's been doing since he got into the into the genre back in January. Mm-hmm. He, he is a brand new author, uh, and I've been kind of keeping an eye on him because uh, I like the look of his books. So far, Open Road is actually the only book of his I've read so far. Um his other books are actually on my Kindle right now. Uh, I will be getting to them eventually. <laughs> um, but I have been keeping uh, an eye on his new career because I think he uh, not only is a talented storyteller, uh, I think 
what he's doing with his career from a business perspective is very smart. Uh, it seems to me that he's doing uh, everything the right way, from the design of uh, his covers uh, and the way he packages his stories to everything he's doing uh, on the author side, like with his email list, his newsletter, um, his funnel with the free short you know, novella. Mm -hmm. uh, everything uh, from his website on down is uh, really top-notch. Uh, he seems to really know what he's doing. Uh, and when I meet you, Garrett, in GRL, I'm totally going to pick your brain. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And a reminder also that uh, there is a raffle copter on this week's show notes where you can register to win uh, one of the signed copies of the new book, Clickbait, that yeah. Garrett's giving away. I'm really looking forward to Clickbait. It looks really yeah. good. But we can enter the contest. Sorry. Well, I didn't say I was going to try and win one of the books. I'll buy it. I'll buy a copy. I'm looking forward to it. So I think that does it for this week. What do you think? I think so, too. Coming up in episode 96, Jay Bell will be here to discuss the something like books, movie, comic book, and more. Yeah. Here's somebody who extends his his grip on his series all over the place. And it's, it's going to end up and be a little bit of a time travel interview because of how we interviewed him in June and then went to the movie in, like, July mm -hmm. and stuff. So, anyway, yeah. it is a fun interview, and, and Jay was awesome. So we look forward to that next week. Yes, we do. Now, remember, everyone, no matter where life takes you, the journey will always be sweeter if you have a book. Until next time, guys, keep reading. For detailed show notes and the complete episode backlist, go to BigGayFictionPodcast.com. New episodes are available every Monday on all major podcast distributors and YouTube. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.